Shell took part in a massive bribery scheme, which robbed the Nigerian people of a billion dollars. In 2011, oil companies Shell and Eni set up a deal in Nigeria for drilling rights to one of Africa's biggest oil fields. But the money was paid to a convicted money launderer and ex-oil minister, depriving the country of money equivalent to more than the 2016 healthcare budget. In public, Shell CEO Ben Van Buren has claimed the payment was a settlement with the Nigerian government. Instead, the money went to private pockets. Leaked emails, seen by Global Witness, show that Shell executives knew this and understood the money could be used for paying people off. According to prosecutors, millions of dollars were paid to Nigeria's most powerful politicians, one of whom spent a chunk of it on armoured cars, luxury shotguns and a private jet. The emails reveal Shell execs talking about politicians on the take and an attempt to deliver significant revenue to GLJ. GLJ stands for Good Luck Jonathan, president of Nigeria at the time. Publicly, Shell still denies it did anything wrong, but the emails prove it knew money was going to private pockets, not the Nigerian people. Right now, five million Nigerians face starvation. This $1.1 billion payment is one and a half times what the UN says is needed to respond to the current famine crisis. Only by exposing the truth can we bring Shell to justice and stop oil companies robbing people of what's rightfully theirs. Share to expose. The oil company Shell has today admitted that they dealt with a convicted money launderer when negotiating access to a vast oil field off the coast of Nigeria in 2011. Shell went ahead with the deal even though they were on probation after being involved in a separate corruption case in Nigeria. Our business editor Simon Jack has this report. Nine billion barrels of oil, the prize for the company who could secure the rights to a lucrative field called OPL245. But doing deals in Nigeria is one of the toughest challenges in the oil business. The building behind me is Shell's UK headquarters. It's the most valuable company on the London Stock Exchange. If you have a pension, you almost certainly own some shares in Shell. They've also been operating in Nigeria for nearly 60 years, so they have the size and the expertise to meet that challenge. In the way was Dana Tete, who acquired the field while he was oil minister. He was later convicted of money laundering in a separate case. For the first time tonight, Shell acknowledges they did engage with him to do the deal. Shell and the Italian oil company Eni acquired the field in 2011, paying $1.3 billion to the Nigerian government. That's more than Nigeria's health budget, but it didn't go on public services. Instead, more than a billion of it was passed to a company called Malabu, controlled by a Tete. From there, according to documents filed by Italian prosecutors, nearly half was forwarded to the then president, Good Luck Jonathan, and members of his government. Shell have always said that they only pay the Nigerian government. Today, Shell has changed its tune and they're now saying that they engaged with Dana Tete, a former oil minister and convicted money launderer. So what prompted Shell to change its position? Well, emails obtained by anti-corruption charities Global Witness and Finance Uncovered and seen by the BBC show Shell representatives negotiating with Mr. Etete a year before the deal was finalised. Etete can smell the money. If at nearly 70 years old he does turn his nose up at 1.2 bill, he is completely certifiable. That email was forwarded to the then Chief Executive Peter Vosa, showing knowledge of Etete's involvement went right to the top. Hi, good luck. Hey, Billy. 